So I've had some people ask me, what do I think of Port Townsend police officer Kamal Sharif? Because I have some reporting out there online about him. Officer Kamal is a good man. He's new here to the Port Townsend area. When he first signed up with the Port Townsend police, there was an article in the paper. He talked about, I believe it was his father, that was against police corruption or had experiences with police corruption and how he understood that and he was going to be different. You know, I took away from the article that he was going to stand up to police corruption and that he was going to have a new fresh look. I believe that Officer Sharif found out that exactly what his father experienced, that it's not so easy to stand up to corruption. It's not easy to obey the constitutional rights of the citizens instead of your boss. Okay. So Port Townsend Police Chief Tom Olson, for example, here. Officer Sharif is a smart man. He's strong. He's agile. He's diligent. He knows what he's doing. He's experienced. He's way more experienced, way smarter, way better at being a police than Chief Olson. However, he doesn't have the clout, right? He's new. He has to respect his elders and pay his dues, you know, and probably some code, code blue, and if you know what you know. At Amy Seuss's press conference, Officer Sharif was so diligent. He was experienced with big, you know, BLM riots in, in Seattle. He was experienced with Antifa's violence. He knew what to look for to protect people. And he, he was diligent. He was all around that crowd and he was talking to the police chief about separating the people. He, you know, he let him know people had guns and batons and Chief Olson did nothing. He really made Officer Kamal Sharif look bad. There was an assault on Officer Sharif. Someone interfered with him, and he knew what was right. He said, that's felony assault three. All the officers agreed. There's officer testimony. There's video. There's witnesses and probable cause. And But by that next morning, Sam Feinson, the mayor's law firm, worked some sort of a deal. It didn't even create a case with it. It was just over. Assault on an officer. Chief Olson made Officer Sheriff look really bad with that. So if you're that officer, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, choose this. I guess he told Julie Jamon he chooses not to be a victim. So, you know, he listened to Chief Olson and violated our constitutional rights, in my opinion. Okay. With the assault on an officer, he should have followed through. He chose his career. I understand that. But he didn't do different like he said in the paper that he would. He'd be different. He'd be able to stand up to corruption. It's not that easy. Chief Olson, he's, he doesn't align with the Port Townsend government. He likes his job. And he likes to be a big fish in a little pond. And he's not. he has a history of not being nice to women. More about that later. You can see that night he violated our rights. He went after Matthew Harding for filming when he didn't do anything at all to our assaults. He couldn't even be bothered to put fencing between the two groups. But Officer Sharif was diligent. He let him know over and over. But Chief Olson stood him down. And you can see him in the videos. He keeps talking to him, talking to him. He shut him up. He took away his power to help us. Officer Camille Sharif wanted to do the right thing. He wanted to get the instigate, instigator out of there. He told Chief Olson right away who was the problems. You could have got him out of there. You may not have had the assaults, but they didn't. They wanted to teach us a lesson, lesson and punish us. So Officer Shrip, being new in town, has to kind of listen to his boss, right? I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have violated anybody's constitutional rights for any job, okay? Sometimes people choose their family. I don't know if he has a family here or not. But why would you choose to violate our rights and listen to your chief? Well, if you're new in town, right, and you're trying to build a career, he chose his career over what was right. I understand that. But I just want the public to know that in general, he's a good man. And he knows what he should have been in charge. He should have designed that night. Okay, not, what was it, Greenspan and um, Jason, I mean, 
some of these other people that designed the incident action plan, they didn't have a clue what Antifa or BLM or what these demons were like, okay? Officer Sharif knew and tried to tell them and they wouldn't listen. He should have been in charge that night. But instead, he's under the wing of the unconstitutional, I'm just going to suck up to whoever suck up to whoever is it the city manager or whoever's in charge and do whatever they say and I don't care whose viol- whose rights I violate. Okay, it's his career that matters most. I would never be like that. Uh, most officers are because they'll lose their job and they're not willing to lose their job to stand up for what's right. There's a lot of good men and I don't know women officers in Port Townsend, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of good men that are Jefferson County police and the city police. And at the rally for decency, you could see them. They're, they're good people, but the corruption, the mobocracy shuts them down for doing the right thing. And chief Olson is their boss. And he's part of all of that mobocracy right? Let's please the politics. Let's look at everything through the lens of politics instead of constitutional rights, individual rights, sovereignty, okay? And violate the rights of some citizens to give rights to other citizens with no equality at all, no human rights, civil rights, constitutional rights. Officer Sharif is a good man. He got, you know, the bike program. People love him. He's nice looking. He's sweet to people. He I don't blame him for that night, but I am reporting on him. I'm going to do a lot more reporting on him. He was assaulted by Ryan Harris. He let that man. So now there's a precedence that in Port Townsend, it's okay to assault an officer. And I'm going to report on all that. But don't think that any of my reporting is criticizing him as a person, okay? He's weak in the way that he's new and he wants to further his own career. So he's listening to his boss. I get that. I know what the code blue is. I know what he would suffer and be up against if he didn't do that. However, I'm on the other side of that. So I'm, I'm not going to really, I'm not going to lie about who he is and what he did that night was unconstitutional. Our rights were violated, but you can see over and over, you know, I, I, I know his voice really well now. I've heard so many tapes and he was trying to tell the other officers and chief Olson what was going on? Who were the agitators? Who was hurting who? Um, you know, get this guy out of here. Let's pull him. Let's separate him. And Chief Olson wouldn't do it. And then a few weeks later, or maybe it was a couple months later, Officer Camille Sharif got a promotion. Was he bribed? Oh, we'll just be quiet about this and we'll give you a promotion. You know, just just um, don't pr- press charges against this Ryan Harris and please the mayor's lawsuit, the mayor's law firm who, you know, got public records and got involved the very next day and got Ryan Harris out of jail. OK, the prosecutor didn't even get the case. It just went away because the victim, Officer Shrift, decided not to go forward. Well, I have a letter from one of our gal sovereign women speak that was assaulted in Tacoma from the Tacoma government that said a victim doesn't have a right to not be a victim. They don't have a right to not press charges against someone who assaulted him. The crime happened. It's on camera. There's witnesses. There's probable cause. He is a victim and he doesn't have a right to not be a victim. And, you know, but here in Port Townsend, mobocracy, right there, they wanted to make this all go away. It's not. It's not going to go away. Check out at Let Julie Swim on Twitter. And um, I have a chronology of events there, and I'm, I'm working on a lot more. You can email me at reverendcrystalcox at gmail.com if you want other information. But I just want you to know Port Townsend is lucky to have that man as a police officer. He is a good man, and he knows what he's doing. And if he had a different chief, uh, he'd be even better man. He... He knew what he was doing that night and he was kind to people and he was good to people. But then he listened to Chief Olson. Then he was mean to us. Oh, you don't feel safe. Just leave. Women come over and said, we're being assaulted. And he actually said to them, if you don't feel safe, leave. Right. Because he's being all macho, macho because he's next next to Chief Olson. Chief Olson was the problem. And Officer Sharif didn't have the guts to stand up for our constitutional rights over what his officer and authority told him to do. But he is a good man, and Port Townsend's lucky to have him. Any event like that, he should be in charge of. So now Chief Olson and him are, you know, best buddies. And and I get it. You know, it's going to work for him. But I'm still going to tell the truth about what happened. Our constitutional rights were violated. Officer Sharif was part of violating them because he didn't stand up to Olson. But he's a good cop, and he knew what was going on that night, and he should have been in charge.